I'm your host, Stephen Van Ober. Welcome to NFL Draft Talk here on the Sports Talk Line Network, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. It's time to welcome our co-host. You can find him on Twitter at Connor NFL Draft. You can find him on the web at nfldraft.sportstalkline.com. Welcome to Connor Livesay. Good day, sir. What's up, guys? Glad to be back on and talk about these uh, Arizona Cardinals today. They had a really good draft, and I'm excited to go through it and talk about some of these guys. Well, you know, they had the first pick of the draft, so hopefully you had a really good draft, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if you have the number one overall pick and you don't have a somewhat positive draft, then you really screwed up in some way. Um, but I think for them, you know, I think they did the, the smart thing. I think they took the best quarterback in this draft class with the number one overall pick. And though he wasn't the best player in this draft class, he plays the best, the, the most important position and his talent, athletic ability, arm strength, all of that stuff is just, uh, it's off the charts for Kylo Murray. Uh, he's going to fit in really well in Lincoln Riley's system. Um, I mean, sorry, Cliff Kingsbury's system. They're, those guys are bro- twin brothers practically, but uh, Cliff Kingsbury's system in Arizona. And it, it's going to be a ton of fun to watch him play quarterback in Cliff Kingsbury's offensive uh, uh, scheme. And, you know, hey, talk uh, a moment about how the NFL evaluation has changed. Thanks to no small part to uh, players like uh, Tony Romo and then uh, Mr. Wilson up there in Seattle uh, and now uh, the Cleveland Browns, uh, uh, Baker Mayfield. You don't have to be six foot three, six foot four anymore, do you? No, and that's it's always been a myth, in my opinion, you know, that, that if you're not sure, if you're too short, you're not going to see over linemen, you know, you're not going to be able to see the whole field. I think that that is a, a load of bogus, you know, Drew Brees is probably the best, one of the top five best quarterbacks to ever play the position. He's under six foot. Baker Mayfield came in under six foot. People threw a fit about his size. He lit up yep. his rookie year. Uh, you mentioned Tony Romo, um, that Russell Wilson, another guy. You know, a lot of these quarterbacks nowadays, the, the good ones, you know, outside of the Tom Brady's and, you know, Phillip Rivers and Ben Roethlisberger's, a lot of these guys are small uh, athletes that can move in and out of the pocket. They can maneuver. They're, they're very mechanically sound, and that's what matters uh, at this level is anticipation skills, mechanic skills. And, and Kyler Murray's a guy who he might not always do it the right way, but he makes it happen. And I think that's important because at the NFL, you're never going to have perfect situations. You're never just going to have super clean pockets, oh. be able to set your feet, deliver a strike every time. A lot of times you're throwing off your back foot or you're throwing while you're running left or, you know, flipping back around. And he just made plays after plays at, at Oklahoma, you know, throwing off that back foot, throwing across his body. Um, people People kind of compared him to a smaller Patrick Mahomes. And you see plays like that that remind you of Patrick Mahomes. I wouldn't go that far to call him that. But he's a ton of fun to watch, a big ball of energy. Uh, Man, he is a big ball of energy. I really like the way that you went there with that because that's what you're talking about with this guy, with this setup. Uh, And whenever you're getting a QB, the guy that's going to run your team, it's all about fit, isn't it? I mean, Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, that, that was a perfect fit. Those guys belong together. Yeah. And I think you've got the same kind of fit here. What do you think? Yeah, there's no no question about it. When when Cliff Kingsbury was hired as the, the head coach um, slash OC Arizona, that the player he was – it came out weeks after he was hired that – that they were going to target Kyler Murray. And a lot of people shot that down or like, no way. They took Josh Rosen in the first round last year. Right. But talking about that fit, Cliff Kingsbury knew what he wanted at quarterback, and he knew that uh, Kyler Murray was going to be that guy. Um, It was all about if he was going to decide to play NFL or play in the MLB, he decided to do the NFL route. And uh, Cliff Kingsbury, I don't think, had many second guesses on who his pick was going to be at number one overall once he found out that Murray was going to, in fact, play football. Well, yeah, when they had him come in there and then after that, he canceled, uh, you know, his meeting with uh, with Washington. He canceled some of the other yeah. meetings. I think it was Baltimore, if, if memory serves, and uh, and and just denied everything. But, hey, come on, you know, just connect the dots. Uh, they had a very good conversation and they said, look, we're going to take you. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it perfect fit. Um, you know, again, a guy who might have a few struggles here in his rookie year, but but we all see that. Baker Mayfield had his struggles here and there throughout the season. Um, all these rookie quarterbacks do at some point in time, but I think he's a guy that, that it's just the perfect system and the, what they did throughout this draft as well. We're going to talk about some of these other guys. It really complemented what Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury's offense is going to look like and how it's going to run in 2019. 
Well, you know, they also have the first pick in the second round. And uh, so they're sitting in prime position to get all sorts of uh, drops, if you will, uh, anything they can do to, uh, to improve the team. And they flip to the other side of the ball uh, as opposed to, uh, you know, maybe getting him some more protection or something like that. And they go for cornerback Brian Murphy uh, out of Washington. Uh, what do you think about this pick right there at the top of the second round? I think that's one of the biggest steals of the draft. Byron Murphy was, in my opinion, a top 10 player in this draft class. Um, not one of these freaky athletes that you see at the quarterback position, but a guy who has good coverage skills. Um, he has great ball skills. Uh, he's going to be a turnover machine. He's going to play, you know, I know Patrick Peterson uh, is, you know, slated to serve a suspension at the beginning of the year, but he's going to line up across uh, on the other side of or in the middle of Patrick Peterson, and that's going to be a really nasty one-two punch for the Cardinals. Um, Patrick Peterson's getting up there in age a little bit, so Byron Murphy is going to play alongside him until Peterson's gone, uh, retired or traded, whatever, you know, comes about with Peterson. Um, but Byron Murphy is a guy who I think is going to slide right in and be one of the, the top, quarter, you know, number two quarterbacks in the NFL just due to his size, his speed, um, his, his ball skills, and his ability to cover. He's a great cover guy with fluid hips, uh, good footwork, um, good, good solid upper body mechanics with his press ability at the line of scrimmage. He can really play off. He can play up and press as well. So he can, he can do a bunch of different things. He can defend the run. Um, he was by far and away the best quarterback prospect in this draft, in my opinion, and, and to land him at, in the second round, the first pick of the second round is just a huge steal, in my opinion. Well, that's what the top of the second round is for, is to find somebody that's dropped and to just snap them up. And that's what they did. I mean, they already had some talent at the cornerback position, but my goodness, they just made that position a strength, didn't they? Yeah, and you, like you said, you know, they, they, they didn't really need the corner. You know, they probably could have gotten by with what they had. Um, but at the same time, you know, cornerback was a, a, a one of the, Top, you know, top five needs for a team. You go through the team's needs and try to list the five. I'd say that that was in their top five. It might not have been one or two or three, but I think it was in there somewhere. And to get a guy that a lot of people thought was the best corner in this draft at the 33rd overall pick, that's just a great value, great position to right. need as well. So, Oh, man, that's nice. Well, you know, the value keeps coming. And now this may be their first reach. Or if you talk to other people, they think this also is a value pick with Andy Isabella, the, the speedster wide receiver out of, Mass uh, out of Massachusetts, and they get him also in the second round. Yeah, and I think that was really good value for Andy Isabella. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, a, a great value. I wouldn't say that it's a, a bad value. I think it's right there in the middle of what you would con consider a good value pick. Um, and, and this is what they were there. You could tell this is what their plan was to do. Um, they struggled blocking and they struggled getting after the quarterback in 2018. And they almost ignored that. And they said, look, we're not going to worry about protection. We're going to worry about getting guys that can get open and we're going to get the football out very fast. And that's what they did. They got a quarterback that is used to being able to sit in the pocket, but he's also able to read defenses, get the quarterback out quick to the two athletes at Oklahoma. We saw that. And that's what they, they the first receiver they took is a great athlete, a guy who can line up inside, he can line up outside. Um, I, I personally think that he could be a better outside receiver than he wills a slot because of his quickness, his speed. Um, one thing that you see with a lot of slot receivers is they're not able to really use that pure speed and explosiveness a lot of the times because their their routes are moving horizontally and not vertically a lot of the time because they're they got a shorter field to work with so being able to line that guy up inside and out and make him run a uh, horizontal and vertical routes a different a bunch of different routes is something he did at umass uh, that's just going to be a great a great you know addition to that wide receiver core that already features larry fitzgerald and then some of these guys they got later is going to be a great um, addition to that wide receiver room for arizona yeah, that's, that's really what's so nice about him. Unlike a lot of, you know, quick guys uh, where, you know, okay, they're going to work them underneath. This guy has the ab uh, you know, ability to go north-south, turn on the jets, and just create separation down the field in a hurry, doesn't he? Yeah, and, and vertically, you know, you don't see a lot of small guys that – consistently win vertically but he's a guy who's going to use that speed um and, and, and ball skills to win down the field but he can also you know run a bunch of you know quick crisp routes underneath he can get open and create separation separation in the shallow parts of the field as well um so he, he's someone that's going to improve as a route runner um in those shorter intermediate parts of the field being able to right. create create that separation a little bit quicker than he does now it just takes him a little while to set up guys because he's a smaller guy he doesn't have those those long legs it's able to sell 
a uh, different route. So he's going to learn. He's going to grow as a route runner. Um, but he's going to be able to make an immediate impact as a deep threat wide receiver that can catch the ball, put the ball in his hands, and let him use that speed to get down the field. Well, they weren't done here, and uh, they flipped back from Andy Isabella in round three, and they go back on the defensive side of the ball with defensive end out of Boston College, Zach Allen. Talk, talk to us some Zach Allen here. Yeah, Zach Allen, another great value pick for them to get him in the third round. There were some people that thought that uh, – Zach Allen could even go at the end of the first, you know, early second. He slipped all the way to the the, the beginning of the third round. Um, he's a guy that can play up and down the line uh, line of scrimmage for the defense. You know, some people had him as a three technique. A lot of people viewed him as like a five tech, uh, so a three four defensive end. Um, some people viewed him as a guy that can play some some outside linebacker as well. He played with his hand up and down at Boston College. Um, and he's a very intriguing guy. Not a guy who wins with a ton of speed, but he's he's got great technique, uh, plays with a tremendous amount of power, and he's got a great motor as well. So he's going to fit in well in that defense. Um, and, and like I said, just putting that guy on the opposite side um, of some of the better pass rushers. You know, they have a guy they drafted not so long ago, Hassan Reddick, who hasn't been what they hoped. No. Um, just yeah, but just to you know, get a guy that, that can that can come in opposite uh, rush opposite opposite of Chandler Jones, uh, that's going to be huge because they haven't had that guy recently. And getting a guy who can hopefully produce, uh, put up put up a little bit of production and help take some of that relief off of Chandler Jones will be a huge you know addition to that defense. Oh yeah, and of course it's going to you know make those cornerbacks even better, which is a scary thought. Uh, you know, when you put those two together and they're not done, even even done upgrading their wide receiver core. Uh, and they come back and get Hakeem Butler, the wide receiver out of Iowa State in the fourth round with the first pick. Uh, what about Hakeem Butler? I, I thought this was a pretty nifty pick as well. I thought this probably could have been the steal of the draft. Um, I said that with Byron Murphy. So that kind of tells you how much I liked uh, the Cardinals draft to get a, a guy with what I say top, you know, top second round talent um, in the fourth round is just huge value. Uh, again, he is a big, physical, fast specimen. He ran a lot better than a lot of people thought he would, but he is big. He is long. Um, he is a guy who is going to catch the football, um, you know, in the red zone. He's going to catch the football for, for possessions. They're going to want to get him the football. He's going to have to improve as a pass catcher. His hands aren't the most reliable, um, but he's a guy who, who needs to improve his route running, needs to improve his hands. But other than that, you have a ton of tools, uh, true wide receiver one tools to work with, with his size, with his athletic ability, with his ball skills. Um, after the catch, he is one of the best wide receivers in this draft class. After the catch, you put the football in his hands and he is a, a nuisance to bring down. So he is going to be a ton of fun in that offense. Again, you got Larry Fitzgerald on one side, Andy Isabel on the other, Hakeem Butler on the other. That's get the ball in these guys' hands and make them make the defense tackle those guys. And, and just exciting, man. Just exciting. Yeah. If you move yeah. up, you know, to try and jack them, you're taking a chance because if they get by you, they're gone. And if you give them some cushion, hey, yeah. they they like to get rid of that ball in a hurry. So I mean, yeah. either way, you're good. You're picking something dangerous. And here they are making really good, tremendously uh, well-thought-out picks at the top of each round. They're getting those drops. They're taking those value picks. And I think they continue it in the top of the fifth round with Deontay Thompson, the safety out of Bama. What do you think? Yep, had some injury red flags coming in. Um, wasn't, you know, the cleanest player off the field. You know, had some off-the-field stuff from a few years back and was – you know, there's some questions about his work ethic and stuff like that. But again, another guy that I had um, in about the middle of the second round, a guy who I has, think has true free safety ability, not a great athlete. I think that was the biggest question on top of his injury uh, right. flags coming in. But he's a guy that just plays with great anticipation, uh, great ball skills. He plays, you know, like a missile. You know, he, he's always running around with his head ready to knock somebody out, but he's also able to go get that football, uh, take the football away from the true free safety position. So I think he's a guy that can that can play interchangeable positions in the back end of the secondary. Um, you know, they, they have uh, the the kid from Washington, Buda Baker, that they drafted a few years ago that they're going right. to try to pair Deontay Thompson with and have two interchangeable safeties that can play up, can play down, can cover, can tackle, and can take the football away. And anytime you have two guys that can play that same style of position at free and strong safety, that's just a a tough way to combat that from the offensive standpoint. Oh, it really is because now these guys can actually each just cover a half of the field, a section of the field, and they can do their respective uh, jobs regardless of how you uh, shift at the last moment up, you know, up on the line, right? 
Yeah, and you know you play a lot of teams that have the the Landon Collins is where you don't want to run at them, but you want to get those guys lined up in man coverage and throw at them. But, you know, Jeff Heath, same thing. You want to line a tight end up. You want to get, you know, Jeff Heath over a tight end. That's a good That's a good matchup for opposing offenses where you can't really do that with Arizona anymore because anytime you split the tight end or running back or slot receiver out wide, you got Deontay Thompson or Buda Baker covering them, and that's not an easy matchup to, to win in coverage. So No, no, um, you're not getting that matchup advantage yeah. to where, hey, I've got a chain mover over here. That's yeah. not the case. All right, well, they go again at the top of the round in the sixth, and they are not done. They continue to upgrade their wide receiving core, and I think they got a guy here that has a good shot to be on the team, Keyshawn Johnson, wide receiver, Fresno State. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Keyshawn Johnson ended up starting for them in the next few years. Um, I think that, again, this is a great, great value in the sixth round. A guy who I think is a very good route runner, catches literally everything thrown his way. He's, he's, he's solid after the catch. Um, he can get, get down the field vertically. He can make the plays underneath as well. So they had a little they had a little consistency with their receivers. They, they got guys who can make plays down the field, guys who can make plays um, you know, in the shallow portions of the field. They, they, they really targeted guys who can make plays after the catch, and that's what they did with Isabella. That's what they did with Butler. That's what they did with Johnson. And like you said, you know, he's a guy who I think for sure is a lock to make their team, and it just wouldn't surprise me in a few years, especially after you know Larry Fitzgerald's gone and retired, that Keyshawn Johnson, Hawkeen Butler, and Andy Isabella are the starting three wideouts for the Cardinals in a few years. And, and not only that, here's something that, you know, nobody mentions, but I'm, I'm telling you what is gold is these guys get to look at how Fitzgerald prepares at what yeah. he does at the in, in the offseason and how he approaches each game. And they get to emulate one of the all time greats, don't you know, don't they? Yep. And just being able to see the effort he puts in day in and day out, his work ethic, his his you know, plan as a professional is going to be great for those guys because they're going to be able to see what a Hall of Fame wide receiver does day in right. and day out and hopefully replicate that and hopefully follow in his footsteps. It's, it's exciting. Well, they're not done in the six. They also had pick number six as well as pick number one, and they snapped up an offensive center out of Georgia, Lamont Galliard. Is he going to play center or guard for them? Uh, probably center. I think that's his best position out, coming out of Georgia. That's where I think he looked best. Um, and he's a solid pick in the late rounds. You got a guy who's going to probably be a developmental center for them. Um, I wouldn't feel feel you know bad if he was asked to start some games for them. I think he's got a lot of potential. Um, not a guy who, who who's going to you know be a great uh, mauler in the run game, but a guy who I think can be a really good productive uh, productive center as a pass blocker. Um, has to build some strength, some functional um, strength, some athletic strength as well. Struggles kind of moving in short spaces, small right, spaces, right. doesn't move around. Um, seems to lack some of that strength when he when he does get you know up close to some guys. So he needs to buy, he needs to develop some of that athletic ability and, and strengthen his legs and upper body. But a guy who I think is going to be a developmental center, um, at least I think you know going to be a, a backup swing you know interior guy who can play guard, can play center. I, I really think that that was a good value pick for them too in the sixth round. Yeah, and, and of course, next year, he'll have that magical one full year at the training table and one full year in, in, the, uh, in the training program. And that, that's generally a big strength jump right there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, just being able to get in a weight room, get in an NFL-style weight room and go through the whole one year. Uh, you normally don't see the results in year one, but year two, you see guys come back and just look completely different, get their body rebuilt, and uh, really make big jumps from year one to year two. So maybe not a guy that you'll see a lot of in year one, but in year one to year two, I think we'll see a big jump from him. It could potentially be a, 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 a you know candidate to start for them um, in 2020. Yeah, but again, here we are in round six, and we're talking about a guy that's going to probably yeah. be on the 53-man roster, aren't we? Yep, I would I would be shocked if he wasn't, and if he isn't, I think it's an injury related issue that they're going to try to, you know. Oh yeah, sneak him through. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, Joshua Miles tackle. They pick him up in the uh, seventh round, and of course they didn't pick at the top of the seventh. They actually picked at the bottom of the seventh due to trades, etc. This is the tackle out of Morgan State. Talk to us about him real quick. Yeah, you know, he was a guy coming in that a lot of people um, thought could be one of the top small school guys in this draft as an offensive lineman. Uh, went ahead of some really big, you know, big time guys. Um, they, they tackled from Clemson, Mitch Hyatt. He went in and drafted. There were some other tackles as well for some big time schools that didn't get drafted. But Josh Miles did go. Um, kind of surprised that he went as early as he did. But you saw some of the things you liked from a small school guy. He, uh, he did dominate his competition. 
um, at his small school. Um, but again, another guy who's probably going to need a year to develop. You know, he's probably right. going to be a practice, more of a practice squad candidate. Um, you know, really get in the weight room, you know, get those reps as a practice squad guy, as a scout team guy. And then in year two, he's going to come back and be battling for a roster spot. But again, this late in the draft, you're looking at guys who have traits and he had some traits that obviously the coaching staff and Steve Kahn liked a lot. So, Yeah. And again, you know, we're talking pick 34. That's, you know, the bottom of the, uh, of the seventh. Actually, that's past the last pick of the seventh round. Now we're into compensatory picks, yeah. et cetera. And they actually have two more of these. They get uh, Michael Dogby, the defensive end out of Temple. Who I think is going to surprise a lot of people. I think that guy is also... Wow going to, you know, I I had, let's just put it like that, they took Zach Allen in the third round. Um, you know, I think if I had to say the value of Zach Allen in the third or Michael Dogby in the, the is the seventh that Michael Dogby went? Yeah. Right. So if you said, hey, would you rather take Zach Allen in the third or Michael Dogby in the, the seventh? I would probably pick Michael Dogby in the seventh because I think they are very similar players. Uh, they're interchangeable. They can play in, they can play down, they can play, you know, outside as a, as a defensive end as well. Um, and I think they are very similar in the ways they play. Uh, he was he was a force at Temple in his last year there. It took him a while to develop, but once he got on the field and got playing time, he was able to run off with it. Had a great year in 2018. Uh, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, talked to. Uh, just a, just a great guy who I think is going to work his butt off and make a lot of turn a lot of heads in Arizona and the NFL um, coming up. It's, uh, yeah, that's exciting. You know, very exciting. You're talking around here in the bottom of the seventh round, you know, past the end of the draft. Uh, actually, it's all compensatory. And you're getting a guy that's almost assuredly going to be on the 53-man roster. He'd be on mine for sure. We'll see what the numbers work out as. But, you know, just the, the tape was really impressive. Um, you know, he, he, he's a guy that went down to the East-West Shrine game and had a really good week down there. Yeah, uh, yeah, he really did. I remember you talking. Uh, and actually, I think right now they're going to run a card up above us that if you click on, you'll get a link to uh, your rankings and you can actually see where you had him ranked and, and yep. click on that and get some more information and, and get profiles and, and things of that nature. And now we get to the last pick. I can't believe, man, that their picks just keep on coming. Uh, and they get Caleb Wilson, the tight end out of UCLA. All right. Uh, is this going to be a scout, uh, you know, scouting team guy? What? The I, I thought I was going to say uh, the NFL liked Caleb Wilson a lot more and a lot a lot than I did, a lot that other people, a lot of you know, scouts did. Um, but I mean, he went where he should have went. He was a late round, you know, undrafted free agent style of guy, um, guy that I thought the NFL liked a lot more than a lot of the the evaluators who were doing this. Um, right. But he's a guy that that didn't impress me on tape. Um, his numbers are impressive, but his tape wasn't really all that impressive. Uh, he, he was ma he, he, a lot of his touches were manufactured. They got you know got him the ball on purpose. Um, so that's something I always try to pay attention to. He, but he's a guy with some athleticism, some size. Um, he's got to improve greatly as a blocker because the blocking skills are, are really non-existent. And I think his his overall ability as a receiver needs a lot of work. But his numbers are impressive, and the the measurables are impressive. So. You know, one of the last picks in the seventh round. I don't mind taking a taking a chance on a guy like that with with some traits that you like. But uh, a guy that I wasn't a huge fan of, but it could work out for Arizona, and that would be a great value for them as well. Oh man, that's a you know just an exciting draft pick all the way around. And uh, you know, it's that time. Drum roll, please. It is time for the Connor Live say. Thing you can't really do right now, but we're going to have you do right now just because we're going to have you do it right now because everybody expects you to do it right now. Grade the draft. Drum rolls over. And uh, what we'd like to do also is we'd like to find out what you guys do to grade the draft here on YouTube or on Twitter, whichever, on Facebook. Drop a comment. Hit a retweet with a comment. Just do it however the platform uh, allows it. And you give us your grade and right now, let's get the grade from Connor Livesay. Sir? As I told you last week, I, I don't like to do letter grades because I can't give somebody an A and then everyone gets hurt and never plays, and then they're going to tell me I'm an idiot. But I'm putting them in the top <laughs> tier of this. You know, if I, if I break this up in tiers, I got the top five is in tier one. Um, and then, you know, you got like five through 15 that I'd say is in tier two and 15 through 25 and tier three and then 25 through 32 and tier four. I'd have them in that top tier as one of the top five drafts in this class um, based on value, based on tape study, based on interviews, all that. I really like the 
I, one, I like the personalities they brought in. I think Kyler Murray uh, has a little maturing to do as a leader, but I think that he's a guy who's going to stay out of trouble. Um, he's going to produce for you. He's uh, Cliff, oh, I like it. Yeah. Cliff Kingsbury's dream as a quarterback. So you got to love that pick. Um, and then you get the Zach Allens, the Michael Dogbees, the Hakeem Butlers, the Andy Isabella. So we're just going to be great personalities for that locker room um, to come in. To, to make a difference in year one. Uh, Byron Murphy is another guy who's just a, he's a natural leader. He's a natural competitor. I think you look at those top five, six, seven, eight picks, and you just got a bunch of guys who, who bring the right mentality, the right leadership, the right skill set to that um, offense and defense for Arizona. And I think they got a couple of difference makers in this draft class, and I think they got a lot of contributors in this draft class as well. So anytime you can do that um, and hit on – multiple multiple picks in a draft you really gotta like what they did and i do i think they had one of the top tier drafts in this class yeah i like what you're doing there man i mean you know to be clear you're 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 precariously balancing on a on a sidewalk that's so wide you know excuse me on a fence that has a sidewalk on top of it <laughs> i mean all right but but actually i i gotta agree with you it's it's in the top tier. It's it's safely in the top tier. I was very impressed with the draft. I couldn't believe, you know, okay, they get one good pick. I'm going like, okay, that's nice. What are they going to do next? I mean, it's the Arizona Cardinals. Come on. Waiting for the other shoe to drop. And they just got value pick after value yeah. pick. And I'm going like, damn, this looks good. And uh, j just drum roll to them. I thought it was very impressive as well. Uh, you, you just got to wonder how much Cliff Kingsbury brought – analytics into this because it's something that Arizona seemed to kind of stay away from for a while. You know, they, they didn't, it seems like they didn't value a lot of the analytics, but it looks like Cliff right. King's very much changed because they drafted a ton of athletes with good athletic ability, good size and good attitudes. And the analytics are huge in those kind of, you know, fundamentals. So it, it, we'll see how it turns out for him. It could turn out great. It could turn off, turn out terrible, but it, you know, no, right I, now, I don't think it could turn out terrible. I, I think it could turn out. Okay. I, you know, if a few guys get hurt or, or don't work out, I, I think it can turn out in between okay to fantastic. I, I, yeah. I don't think terrible is really an option. No, I, I don't either because I think at worst, Kyler Murray is going to be a top 20, 25 yeah. quarterback in the NFL. And if you got a guy like that, and then you you got a quarterback who's probably going to be one of the top guys in the league in a few years, in my opinion. It can't. It, you you got position. You you targeted the positions that mattered on the football field, and that's quarterback, that's wide receiver, that's secondary, mm -hmm. and that's defensive line. And you targeting those positions are huge. So and 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 I really love that the uh, the the head coach is using the Fran Tarkenton training method. You know to to teach him to get rid of the ball quickly <laughs> and, and scramble when he has to. Because Fran Tarkenton had the worst offensive line in the history of yeah. the NFL, and that's why he started scrambling, and that's why you know he, he got good at getting rid of the ball quickly and uh if he actually learns to be productive and that and, you know right away with that as they prove that offensive line it you know the sky's the limit for this kid yep so they're kind of i know some teams like to build the offensive line then get the quarterback then get the receivers and then add the runner they're kind of doing it the opposite way which personally i think is the best way to do it is you get your quarterback you get the weapons that are going to get open for them. You get you can you can combat pass rush nowadays by getting the ball yes, out fast and scheming pass rush to, to Tony take that Romo pass rush did it away. for years, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> caught up with him. But you know. I think I think they're building the team the right way, and I like everything they did. Um, so yeah, you know, definitely one of the top drafts in this draft class. All right. Well, look, I would really like to thank you, for, as always, for being here. Thank you so much. And uh, why don't you tell folks very quickly about what you're going to be producing here over the next few weeks? Yep. You know, follow me on Twitter, as always, at Connor NFL Draft. And then we're going to keep keep knocking out these uh, these team draft previews. And then once training camps get started, preseason gets started, we're going to really highlight some of these guys, see how they're doing in training camp. Hopefully we can make it out to some training camps to see how these guys are doing and get some actual video evidence of their success and failures. So that's something we plan on doing uh, throughout the next few months um, in the training camp. And then once the season gets started off, we're going to be doing weekly reviews on the rookie class, seeing who's impressing, who's disappointing, and who's really uh, making out his, his value in this draft class. All right, well, there you go. And we'd like to take this moment to ask everyone to do the social media thing as we sign off. Hey, on Twitter, give us that retweet. Give us that like. You know, we appreciate that love. Uh, please come and follow the uh, account at Sports Talk Line. You can also find me at Stephen Dan Over. And uh, hey, on Facebook, you know what to do. You're following the group. 
please give the like on that as well. And in YouTube, you got to hit that bell, you know, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be the first to know when we come out with a new episode, which we do on a regular basis. Thank you so much for being here, Connor, and to everyone taking time out of their day to listen with us. Until next time, listen like you play with intensity.